Howdy! Welcome to Aspire Mountain Academy. I am Professor Curtis, your instructor for this course in Introductory Statistics. In less than 10 minutes, this video distinguishes between z-scores and areas and then provides more practice in finding probabilities for normal distributions. Let's get started. So there are some students who continue to confuse z-scores and areas. We've talked about this distinction in previous mini lectures, but it's so important that we not confuse these two animals that I want to talk about them once more. So remember that the z-score is the distance along the horizontal scale. It's the number of standard deviations that a given value is from the mean value. Z-scores can be positive, which means they're on the right side of the mean, or they can be negative, which means they're on the left side of the mean. Areas, on the other hand, are regions underneath your density curve for your normal distribution. They represent a probability, okay? And so, because of the way that we define probabilities, probabilities have to be a value between zero and one inclusive, areas are never negative. They never are negative because that density curve, again, never goes below the x-axis. It never has a negative value. And so therefore, the area itself will never be negative. It's always going to be a positive value. In our z-score table, the z-scores appear as column and row headings. But remember, the areas are in the body of the table itself. So the headings for the columns and the rows are what we use to construct the z-score but the areas in the body of the table. So, you know, don't get these two confused. They're very different animals, although they are related to each other. We also need to remember to choose the correct side of the area under the curve, whether we're looking for the area on the left, which is usually less than, or the area on the right, which will correspond with more than or greater than. Remember that z-score tables usually list the area to the left of your z-score. So if you're using a z-score table and you want the area to the right, you have to take that area value that's there in the table and subtract it from 1 to get the area on the right. Let's look at an example problem involving Tall Clubs International. Now, Tall Clubs International is a basically a social group that was started a number of years ago for unusually tall people. In order to join Tall Clubs International, women must be at least 70 inches tall. So if we have a, a normal distribution for the heights of women that has a mean of 63.8 inches and a standard deviation of 2.6 inches, the question we're asked is what percentage of women satisfy the height requirement so they can join Tall Clubs International. Let's walk through this together. So first off, what we're going to do is convert the random variable to a z-score. This is solving it the old school way. So we're going to take our conversion factor from our z-score equation and we're going to find that our z-score for our 70 inches is 2.38. So that corresponds in our normal distribution to what you see right here. So here's our normal distribution, and here's a scale with our z-scores. So 2.38 is going to be right here. Notice that this region that's shaded is representing the area under the curve. That's the probability that someone will actually be able to join Tall Clubs International. And we got that area there on the right. And the boundary for that area here on the left is our z-score, the 2.38. So we can quantify that area that's associated with the z-score that we found. We just go to our z-score table, and we're going to look up 2.38. So 2.3 here on the left, and then 0 0.08 up top. So the value we're looking for is 0.9912. Three. But remember, this is the area to the left. We want the area to the right. So to calculate the area that we're looking for, we have to take that probability that we found, and that's going to be uh, subtracted from 1, 
And the reason why we subtract from 1 is because we want the area to the right. So when we do that, we get 0 0.0087. So there's less than 1% chance that a woman's actually going to be a member of Tall Clubs International. As I said, it was a social club that was started for exceptionally tall people. Of course, I could always do the same thing in StatCrunch. Go into StatCrunch, put in my mean and standard deviation values, and then come out with you know, the actual probability that I'm looking for when I put the 70 in. I can get that directly from StatCrunch. Either way, there's our probability, 0 0.0087. Let's look at another example problem that involves the same sort of concept. So, engineers that design passenger aircraft cabins have to balance allowing most people to stand inside while minimizing weight. And especially in the aerospace industry, when you're building an aircraft, you want to minimize the weight as much as possible. So, oftentimes when engineers design something, the answer to make something more safe is just to make the parts more bulkier, okay? Make them bigger, make them thicker, bring in more material. That increases your factor of safety. Well, when you do that with an aircraft, what you end up doing is spending a whole lot more money to maintain and operate the aircraft because it, it, the more weight you have in your aircraft, the more fuel you're going to need to get it off the ground and to keep it off the ground. And that translates into a high cost. So in order to lower those costs, we want to make these, you know, everything in the, in, the, in the aircraft, we want to minimize everything as much as possible so we can get that lowest weight and therefore save money on the aircraft fuel. So here we have a normal distribution for the heights of people with a mean of 69.5 inches, standard deviation of 2.4. So what ceiling height in the aircraft cabin is going to allow 95% of men to stand erect? So that just means they're just going to be able to stand up straight. So go ahead and pause the video here and then get into, you know, solving the problem and then come back and we'll see how well you did. Okay, let's see how you did with this. So we're going to use the probability to find the area underneath the curve. We've got the 95%. Now we want to find that area under the curve, which of course is going to be one in the same thing. That area is 95% of the whole. We convert the area into a z-score. So back in our z-score tables, we look for 95%. And again, that 95% is listed here in between two values. So that means we're going to have to take that column heading that's in the middle, combine it with the 1.6 for the row heading. That gives us a z-score of 1.645. So that's going to be that right bound there on our area underneath the distribution curve. But what is the corresponding random variable value? Well, I can use my z-score equation to convert that back through. Remember, we rewrote it to solve for x. So if I punch in my numbers here, I can then solve for that random variable value and find out that it's 73.4. So we can do this both ways. We can do it looking for the probability or we can do it looking for the random variable of interest. Let's take a look at the same problem with just a little caveat. Suppose our class were flying as part of an extended field trip. What percentage of our class would be able to stand erect inside an aircraft cabin with a ceiling height? So now we've got a new distribution we're looking at. Go ahead, stop the video, see if you can solve this, and then come back we'll see how well you did. And again, the easiest method here is to use StackCrunch. So we use StackCrunch. Here's the values you should get out for that. Let's put in the values for the mean and the standard deviation. We want a ceiling height of 73.4. We're looking for what's greater than what's less than that, and we find out that it's going to accommodate 94.6% of the populace. Note the software takes care of everything for you. So make sure you've got that right inequality selected when you're solving these problems, and you should be good to go. 
And that brings us to the end of this mini lecture. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.